As promised, it's wood carving tool day, handheld tools outside of the knife. Uh, I told you I'd uh, try to demystify some of the questions you may have as uh, I'm getting a lot, a lot of questions again with the new guys that don't go back and check out the really old videos. And that's okay because we'll have a fresh, fresh take on it. But I want this to be a quick and dirty, simple, bare bones video. And I just want to explain to you how it is that I can take a number nine gouge and carve this as well as this. All right, same tool, obviously different sizes. All these tools have a numbering system. If you grab any tool, whether it says it right on the handle or if it says it on the steel, but uh, usually it's graded between one and 12, say, and uh, starting with number one, one's flat, so simple. All right, one is flat as flat can be, but that could mean it could be skewed, where it's a, an angle, still a number one, double, double beveled, right? To a carpenter slick, it's number one, right down to these little, uh, little micro, micro carving tools like that. That's still a number one. So that's the sizing difference where, as I say, I can take a number one and do a tiny thing and take a number one and do a big thing. A one is a one is a one, but it's the width of the blade that makes a difference, okay? So this here says, whatever it says, I think it's two, two millimeter. Why are they all in millimeters? I have no idea, but that seems to be the way that they're sold. So one is a one, but two millimeters versus 35 millimeters, right? So that's the main difference. So when you're talking about number two, you're talking about the same thing, only with the slightest of bevel, the, just the tiniest of bevel. I hope you can see that. It's, it's almost non-existent. I would never buy a number two unless it came in my set like it did, all right? Because it's so close to a number one. Now, when we're talking number three, that's a little bit different. And uh, I got a big three. There's a big three. I should have one bigger, but a three I like. It has just a little bit more of a, a belly in it. And I would still use a three on a flat surface as a, as a flat chisel because I'm carving wood and I want you to see facets. So when I carve something flat with a number three, I leave the carved marks to show that it's carved. So big fan of a number three, I am. All right. And as well as a number one has its place, but four. Let me grab a four here. Oh, I don't have a four. I have never seen a four. I don't know. I'm sure they must make it, but I have no four. But what I do have is a number five. And the number five, again, is the same thing with just a little more belly. Obviously you see a theme coming here. The higher you get, the more belly you get. And uh, while I'm talking about this, you see that's blue tip on there. People always ask me, why do you, where do I get the tools with the colors on them? You don't. This is my own crazy brain work that I want to know when I have a pile of tools. I don't want to look at the edges. I want to look for the color, all right? So I just mark them all. Blue is five. Uh, red is V-tools, oranges are nines, greens are elevens, and that's the same whether I'm doing a, well, let me just grab them here, you know, <laughs> it's, it, whether it be a micro tool, I have a little, a little blue on there, a blue and a big one, you know, it's all the same right across the board, like even my little, I even put, made the handles black on the number eights, for, <laughs> so that's my own crazy brain, so when you see these colors, that's just my way of organizing so that when I have a pile of tools there, I don't have to look. I just look for the color and I know what I'm looking for. All right. It just makes it easier for me. But again, five, whether that be, you know, an inch, <laughs> 35 millimeter or I don't even know what that is probably or, or four millimeter, right? Same number, different size. All right. Now you say, show me a six. Again, they must make them. Never had one. Never had one. But 
Seven, seven. We all know seven, that's purple, all right? And where's the big seven here? Where's the purple? Here's the purple. I don't have too many sevens, but again, I'll just trace that on there. All that is is a little more belly, right? Just a little more belly and the same, same thing, whether that be a palm tool or a double-handed tool, seven is a seven is a seven. Now, number eight is the same as a seven, only what? A little more belly. So if I take a number eight here, I should mention too, this number eight has a bend in it. So tools can come with a bend. Even that, you can see that, how it's got a dip. And those are all specialty, and uh, I don't really seek them out. They just come, but unless I'm carving a bowl, I don't really care too much about the belly, all right? So there's your number eight. Now, my favorite tool is a number nine. Nine is what I do my eye sockets with, a lot of my gouging, my trims, my thing, every... I love number nine. Number nine to me is the most versatile gouge. And uh, again, all different shapes and sizes. I've got a 35 mil, but if I'm doing one by one, then I'll use a little five mil. Okay, and that's the difference. Oh, I should take that back. I will trace that on there. That is the difference when I'm talking about these is that I'm in two camps. So the large camp, larger tools for the big bark faces and whatnot and then the little one by ones I go down to little tinier tools right little handheld palm tools or micro tools but again a number nine is a nine is a nine now we'll get to number ten number ten is a cousin of number six and they ran off together because I've never seen one but eleven is a, another fantastic uh, tool number eleven I've heard it referred to as a number nine with high sides but it's not quite true it's a little bit a little bit steeper and a uh, number 11 I use a number 11 even as a as a V tool um, as a V tool really <laughs> I uh, it's a little bit softer okay so if I'm doing like woman features or in the hair and whatnot not many times do I use a, a V tool and just for those hard edges I use a, a number 11 that softens it up but uh, Number 11 is a very versatile tool. Like I said, take it, uh, see the, the depth. Here, this is a number 5 versus an 11. But you can see the, how high the sides are. I hope you can see. Totally different animal. And that, you should never work deeper than the sides of your tools, right? So you're never going to, you're not going to cut into wood higher than the edges, the corners of your tool. So that's where a uh, number 11 is nice because you can go deeper in one swoop and go a little bit uh, a little bit farther and quicker all right so number 11s are great and like they go down to i think one millimeter right so okay well that's basically uh the real quick and dirty i know there's 12s i've never seen them either but if i could take three of these i would take a number three nine and eleven those are my those are my favorites and if i had to pick one more maybe i'd take a number five kind of like the middle in the middle all right uh again not going to tell you sizes of what you want if i'm doing one by one i love the five millimeter uh it's, it's my favorite gouge is a five millimeter number nine for the one by one series but if i was doing faces i think i'd probably take a a 20 mil you know a 20 mil for the the bigger faces but again, a, a variety is nice, right? But do you need them all? Of course not. When we're talking V-tools, V-tool is just that. It's a tool that cuts a V-shape in the, in the wood, all right? So starting out with a 90 degree, still a V, right? It's a 90 degree V-tool. That's what you get. You get just that. A tool that cuts a perfect 90 degree. All right, now it doesn't stop there though, because then you've got your your 70s, your 60s. You have a you have a 120 in there somewhere too. Okay, but if I was going to buy one V tool, 
I do like a 90, but I'd probably opt for a 70 if I was only buying one, but I do like the 90. So a 90 and a 60, really, if I wanted to. The 120 is cool once in a while, but again, you probably won't use it very often, all right? Now, again, these go from the micro tools from one millimeter to 35 millimeters. So there's all the range and size. The only variance is you can get what they call a soft V. Now a soft V is just a little, a little soft bottom, a little rounded bottom. All right, that just kind of takes it out. But you know what? If you got 11, you're okay. You don't need that, all right? But if you want to have all the tools, you can get soft Vs as well, all right? Now, a, a V tool is not just for, it's also called a parting tool, but it's not just for parting. You can, uh, you'll learn over time just to use the, the sides of the, of the V tool and just hedge up to uh, little corners and cracks and sides of things. And you'll start using the sides of the V tools a little bit. And uh, really, you do have a, a small number one on the sides of your, uh, your V tool. So you can use it for many different things, but the, that's really the quick and dirty of it all. Like I said, it all comes down to what you want to carve. And if it's faces, sculptures, you want bigger tools, but there's also a place for the smaller tools on the sculpture for the finer details. Now, if you're only doing smaller carvings, like one and a half to one inch, then uh, you definitely don't need anything over 10 mil. You know, five mil, two mil, four mil, it depends what you're doing, but uh, I'm not gonna tell you what you need. You'll have to figure out, and as as I do videos in the future, you'll say, oh, he used a, a, a number seven on the fur trim. I should get myself number seven next time I'm around, you know, or buy a set. But a set always contains tools that you will never ever use. <laughs> like like a skew, I every time I buy a set, it comes with a skew blade, and basically a skew, is your number one again but i always said they were junk and i had no use for them in the past and now 10 years later i find myself grabbing a skew once in a while and uh, using it so i don't know everything i'm learning every single day but uh i just wanted to give you the real quick and dirty on the gouges and, and whatnot to uh, help you understand better when in the future you see me using a tool and i say i'm going to use a number nine five mil you'll know the number nine what you just didn't know was the width all right so that's it so i was so confused when i started wood carving I, to the point of frustration in fact i bought multiple tools that ended up all being the same what i'm trying to say is when i grab a number nine five millimeter tool on a one by one carving that's what i'm grabbing but if i'm on doing a sculpture or something I may grab a, a number nine five millimeter and it might be a two-handed handle. Or I might be doing a, a really tiny carving and uh, grabbing a number nine five mil. <laughs> it has a different handle. They're all the same tool. They're all the same head. It's what you're doing with them. So if you want to do handheld tools, you're not going to have a two-handed handle to do a handheld carving. Can you do it? Yeah, you just choke up on it. But why would you want all that, right? So hopefully that helps. So, take it easy. I will be back again and we'll get doing stuff. This is uh, a lot of videos in a row, but I can't answer everybody's questions all the time. And I want to be clear that if I fade off in the sunset, you'll always have the information you need and uh, you can be your own judge of what you do need. So, all right, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you next time.